हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर इम्तियाज हसन फ्रॉम जामिया मिल्ल इस्लामिया सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल कन्फर्मेशन ऑफ प्रोटीन इन विच वी डिस्कस फर्स्ट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मेजरमेंट ऑफ द प्रोटीन एंड देन कन्फर्मेशन चेंजेस इन प्रोटीन एंड वी स्पेशली डिस्कस द प्रोटीन मेल्टिंग अंडर द डिफरेंट कंडीशन अंडर द पेपर टेक्निक्स यूज इन मॉलिकल बायोफिजिक्स पार्ट टू आफ्टर दिस लेक्चर the students will be able to understand overview of the protein conformation how what are the protein structure and how it is conformation then we discuss about the methods used for the protein concentration measurements then we talk about the protein conformation from synthesis to function right from the synthesis of the protein in the cell and then how it achieve the function then we talk about the factors that determines the conformation of the protein and at last we discuss about the protein denaturation and melting especially methods and its significance so we first discuss about the overview of the protein structure as you are know that the protein are synthesized by the cellular machinery like ribosome and the ribosome synthesizes the protein which is having information on the messenger rna and gives a linear polypeptide chain of the protein and this linear polypeptide chain is converted into a well defined three dimensional structure that's important for the that is the essential important for the function of the protein so as they are synthesized they assume secondary and tertiary structure like alpha helical conformation and then they form a compact structure that's known as three dimensional structure or tertiary structure so the activity of protein is depending on the integrity of its final tertiary structure and it's also referred as native form because this form is generally exist in the cell and loss of a structural integrity is leads to the denaturation of the protein and of course it is the activity is lost so the main force that governs that is responsible for the maintenance of three dimensional structure of protein is the hydrophobic interaction that contribute strongly to the protein folding and stabilization we discuss about the journey of protein from polypeptide you can see here the messenger rna which carries information about the protein sequences bound to the ribosome and transfer rna and which lead to the synthesis of the protein in the linear form that is known as the unfolded state from the unfolded state it has to go into the many different cycles it can be simply destructed by the cellular machinery it's simply degraded by the cellular machinery or it bind to the some chaperon molecules which converted into the fully active and the native conformation if it is unable to do so then it may form the aggregates and it may form amyloids we discuss how the structural information of protein is hidden in its sequence for that a well known scientist professor n finson performed a very very simple experiment he took a model protein ribonuclease a that having the 616 residue forming the is having the 816 residue forming four hydrogen bonds so it is the native and catalytic state catalytically active state he added mercaptoethanol and urea to the ribonuclease a solution the urea is used to denature the protein structure and mercaptoethanol breaks the disulfide bond so the protein becomes fully unfolded and catalytically inactive state with reduced disulfide bond then he further removes the mercaptoethanol and urea by simple dialyzing found that the bond formation of the disulfide bond formation is the same as it was in the native conformation despite of 105 different combination of disulfide bond formation combination of disulfide bond formation only a certain type of disulfide formation was allowed so it suggesting that the structural information of protein is hidden in its sequence we discuss about the energy landscape of protein structure and its conformation you can see that 
simply we can first we discuss from the primary structure to the tertiary structure and how the it is energetically favored so you can see simply the amino acid if you mix the two amino acid in a solution you can see the amino group and carboxylic acid group of the two amino acid forms the uh, covalent bond known as the peptide bond and this peptide bond is partially double bond characteristic feature and that's why it having the flattened structure and thus it allows the peptide bond allows the rotation of c alpha atoms towards a plane and that's what it regulates the tertiary secondary structure formation of the protein you can see here in the middle panel that the primary structure is simply the sequences of the amino acid linear sequence of the amino acid because of a structural information hidden in its sequence it either form beta seated structure or the alpha helical conformation sometime if there is no structure alpha and beta sheet it means it is the random coiled structure and thus the whole polypeptide chain is folded into the a well defined three dimensional structure it is known as the tertiary structure of the protein and in few proteins the many polypeptide chains are held together and form the quaternary structure of protein such as the well known example is the hemoglobin so if you see the energy dynamics from the primary structure to the tertiary structure the unfolded state or the primary structure it can be having a large number of conformation and that's what it possesses high energy and high entropy but due to the systematic arrangement it leads to the formation of middle medium kind of energy and lesser number of conformation as compared to the unfolded state and uh, some sort of the in lesser entropy and that's known as the multinucleus state and final structure which having the minimum energy is known as the native conformation which is having the minimum entropy minimum energy and maximum stability and functional state of the protein we discuss about the protein estimation the quantification of protein content is important and it has many clinical applications there is a wide variety of the protein assay available but each assay has its own advantage and limitation so first we must know that the what are the factor that we should consider before choosing a method these factors are most important sensitivity the presence of interfering substances and of course time availability of the assay so a large number of methods are available to estimate the protein concentration and different method have their own advantage and disadvantage these methods are biurate method bradford methods fall in lorry method jeldal methods by bca methods uv visible spectrophotometry method and fluorimetry method you can see here the development of color is directly proportional to the concentration of protein that is used to estimate the concentration of protein in a unknown sample we compare the different methods of the protein estimation for example you can see here the biurate method it is the relatively having low sensitivity for our 1 to 20 mg of the protein is required and it is requires lesser time 20 to 30 minutes and for this reagent is alkaline copper sulfate and it has a simple disadvantage of the destruction of protein sample the other tech method is the lorry method it is the highly sensitive it having the low high sensitivity it used to estimate up to 5 microgram and it of course it requires some more time 40 to 60 minutes and it is based on the copper folin scatacho reagents and it destruction of the protein sample also occurs the bradford method is relatively highly sensitive it can estimate up to one microgram of the protein and requires lesser time to the 15 minutes and the reagent is very simple comacy brilliant blue g25 g250 and the bca method is also very very sensitive although it requires more time but it is the highly specific method the other method is the spectrophotometry method which is the simple but it requires large number uh, be, uh, relatively high amount of the protein and no reagent is required but it is the more empirical methods we discuss the steps of the lorry method you can see here that the first step 
is the reduction of copper ion under alkaline condition which forms a complex with the peptide bond and in the second the reduction of the folin reagent by the copper peptide bond complex which subsequently causes a color change of the solution into blue with an absorption in the range of 650 to 750 nanometer. The advantage of this assay are sensitivity and most importantly accuracy. However, it requires some more time than the other assay. So you can see here there are two conformation of the protein one is the natively one of the linear random coil structure there is no structure at all it is known as the unfolded state and by the cellular machinery by the cellular environment it is converted into the well defined three dimensional structure it is called native conformation of the protein so these two types of conformation of protein is the extreme end one is the unfolded state that is the simply synthesized protein from the messenger RNA and then it converted to the fully folded three dimensional structure that is the active form of the protein and also termed as the native protein. For estimation of protein concentration especially for the unknown protein concentration we must have a standard curve. That standard curve is actually showing the linear relationship between the absorbance versus the concentration and the amount of protein in the sample can be estimated by an standard curve for the selected protein for example we take the casein we can take the well-known protein like the bsa and the standard curve is a type of graph that is used for the quantitative measurements a standard curve of protein concentration is often created using the known concentration of bovine serum albumin and then this concentration curve is used to estimate the concentration of unknown protein unknown sample so the protein will be will analyze is bovine serum albumin and it the serum protein that transports fatty acid from the and important for the ph plasma ph of the plasma the protein quanti quantitization assay bsa serve as a reference protein that is used to construct the protein standard curve other protein can also be used depending on the physical and chemical properties of your protein of interest so you can see here in the standard curve you can see the absorbance is at the y axis and the concentration of protein at the x axis and as you increase the concentration of protein there is a linear curve now we you can measure the optical density or absorbance value of the particular unknown concentration unknown sample and then you can directly estimate the concentration right exact concentration of protein by putting the value of absorption in this curve and then you can estimate the concentration of protein of interest now we discuss about the biurate test it is the most commonly used method for determination of the total protein in a sample sample the biurate method is based on the complexation of copper to the functional group of the protein peptide backbone like the protein back, back, backbone having a functional group like co and nh that forms the bonding with the copper ion and the formation of copper protein complex requires two peptide bonds and produces a violet colored chelate products which is simply measured by the absorption spectroscopy at the 540 nanometer so over a given concentration range the measured absorption of 540 nanometer is linear with respect to the concentration of protein and the intensity of color and hence the absorption at 540 nanometer is directly proportional to the protein concentration and it strictly follows the pierre lambert law the another method is the biurate method in which the hydrated copper sulfate that pro that provides the copper 2 ion which forms the chelate complexes and copper 2 ion gives is the produce the characteristic blue color in which the potassium hydroxide actually do not participate in reaction but it only provides the alkylating medium alkaline medium and the another important component is the sodium potassium tartrate it it stabilizes the chelate complex and prevent precipitation of the copper hydroxide and potassium to prevent auto reduction of the copper you can see here clearly that how the copper is complex with the two polypeptide chain and then you can see as you increase the concentration of protein the intensity of blue color is increased dramatically so that value the intensity of color is used to estimate the amount of protein in the unknown sample we talk about the Bradford method 
you can see here that the, as you increase the concentration of protein the intensity of blue color is increased for the bradford method we use comacy brilliant blue g250 dye in a calorimetric reagent for the detection and quantification of total protein in the acidic environment of the reagent bind to the comacy dye and results an spectral shift from the reddish brown of the dye which has absorption maximum at 465 nanometer to the blue form of the dye which have in the absorbance at the 610 nanometer the development of color in comacy dye is based on bradford protein assay has been associated with the presence of certain basic amino acid primarily arginine lysine histidine in the protein free amino acid peptides and low molecular weight protein does not produce color in the comacy dye. Unbound forms are green or red. The advantage of this method include that it is highly sensitive and is able to measure 1 to 20 microgram of protein and method is very fast. You can see here the simple the Bradford principle. This is the structure of the comacy blue G250 which is earlier it is the brown in color but binding with the protein it produces blue color which is estimated at 95 nanometer and the difference between the two form of dye is greatest at 595 nanometer so that's the optimal wavelength to measure the blue color from the comacy dye of the protein complex we talks about the bisiconinic acid simply called bca method it is based on reduction of the cupric ion to cuprous ion by the proteins. BSA reagents and copper sulfate is the main component of this reaction and the outcome of reaction is analyzed by measuring the absorbance at 562 nanometer. This is one of the most sensitive method and requires minimum amount of the protein. You can see here in the structure that how the two polypeptide chains are interact to the copper ion and forming the complex. You can see here in the A, BCA, copper plus 1, BCA. Then in the B, BCA, copper plus NTBP. And in the third C panel, you can see NTBP, copper plus NTBP. And this method is used for the estimation of protein at the minimal concentration. We discuss about the Jeldal method. This method consists of three basic steps. First step is the digestion of sample in sulfuric acid with a catalyst which results in the conversion of nitrogen to ammonia. The second step is the distillation of ammonia into a trapping solution and the third step is the quantification of the ammonia by titration with the standard solution. The sum of the organic nitrogen, ammonia and ammonium is proportional to the protein concentration. This is the Jeldal method, a structure of the Jeldal flask shown here that the protein solution is boiled and the nitrogen is trapped in the solution and how the nitrogen is estimated. The UV spectrophotometric method is the most commonly lab method for the estimation of protein concentration in which you don't need any reagent. Simply put the protein in the cuvette and then you measure the optical density of the protein at 280 nanometer. It is because of the tyrosine and tryptophan content of the protein as the amount of tyrosine and tryptophan content in the protein is directly proportional to the absorbance and of course it is the used to estimate the concentration of the protein. At least extent the phenylene and disulfide bond also contribute for the absorption value. For the experimental procedure the optical density of the test solution is measured at 260 nanometer and 280 nanometer by using the following formula like you can use the protein concentration milligram per ml equals to 1.55 into optical density at 280 nanometer minus 0.76 into optical density at 260 nanometer. The optical density of the protein solution is depending on the three chromophore like you can see tryptophan tyrosine and phenylene in which you can see that this is the absorption spectrum of the all three amino acids in free solution and you can see the contribution of tryptophan is the maximum because it having the two aromatic rings while the tryptophan is a little bit lower 
and phenylalanine is a very very low so all, but anyway all these three chrome force is majorly responsible for the absorption of protein at 280 nanometer we discuss fluorimetric method it is based on the derivatization of protein with othalaldehyde opa which reacts with the primary amines of the protein the sensitivity of the test can be increased by hydrolyzing the protein before it testing you can see here the shift base formation between opa and the glycine we talk about the protein conformation from synthesis to function you can see here that the protein synthesis occurred in large number of steps after the synthesis it further requires a lot of cellular machinery such as the groel groea system which helps to the protein to correctly fold and then forms the fully well organized tertiary fold structure of the protein now we discuss about the molecular chaperone that's responsible for the folding of protein from the native from the lean random coil structure to the three dimensional structure in the living system especially in the cellular environment so the nascent polypeptide comes from the ribosome and the fold it spontaneously molecular chaperones are involved in their folding in vivo and are related to heat shock protein known as hsp minimize heat and stress damage of the protein that's called that's lead to the protein renaturation or it's another way now degradation the molecular chaperone facilitates the correct folding of protein by minimizing the aggregate formation or the other misfolding events so it binds simply to the nascent polypeptide to prevent premature folding and the molecular chaperones bind to nascent polypeptide and then it facilitates the membrane translocation import by preventing folding prior to the membrane translocation it also facilitates the assembly and disassembly of multi protein complexes we discussed the different types of forces that involved in the stabilization of three dimensional structure of the protein you can see here in the structure these forces are hydrogen bond which is formed between the oxygen and hydrogen atoms which is attached to the electronegative elements such as itself oxygen on the nitrogen then we you can see here the hydrophobic interaction it is found in the interior of the protein disulfide bonds and weak electrostatic interactions and some van der waal interactions so the disulfide bond stabilizes the native conformation of protein and most stable or most uh, one of the strongest bond then the hydrophobic interactions are present in the interior of the protein and it provides the maximum stability of the protein because it helps in the collapsing the protein maintaining in the protein the three dimension conformation the hydrogen bonds pairs between the residue of the water and the polar groups within the protein and some ionic interaction stabilizes the structure of the protein we talks about the protein denaturation denaturation is a phenomena that involves transformation of well defined folded structure of a protein formed under physiological condition to an unfolded state under the non physiological conditions it occurs suddenly and completely over a narrow range of condition and sometime it is reversible you can see here in the structure that uh, the structure of normal protein and the structure of denatured protein and these two forms are reversible under certain conditions now we see that what are the consequences of the denaturation of the protein the protein denaturation leads to the loss of enzymatic activity destruction of the toxin properties improved digestibility loss of solubility and change in the texture protein stability is defined as the net balance of the forces which determines whether a protein will be in its natively folded conformation or a denatured state providing an understanding of the basic thermodynamics of the process of folding the net stability of protein is defined as the difference between free energy of the native state and denatured state both free energy of native and unfolded state contribute to the value of gibbs free energy that is the delta g which is defined as the minus rt ln k 
where K is the equilibrium constant. He talks about the protein denaturants. This graph showing that how the balance between pressure and temperature maintains the three-dimensional structure of the protein. If you move either towards the higher side of the temperature or towards the lower side of the temperature, similarly lower towards sides of the pressure as well as the temperature, the protein got denatures. However, a wide range of the temperature and pressure maintains the three-dimensional structure of the protein as shown in the green color. There are several denaturants are used to denature the protein. These denaturants are heat, ultraviolet radiations, strong acids or bases, urea and guanidinium hydrochloride, some organic solvents such as ethanol and acetone and agitation is also causing denaturation of the protein by shearing of hydrogen bonds. You can see the extremes, how the extremes of pH changes the three-dimensional structure of the protein and its conformation. High pH and low pH denatures many protein. However, some proteins are quite stable at pH 1. The basic idea is that the net charge of a protein due to titration of all the ionizing group leads to the intramolecular charge charge repulsion, which is sufficient to overcome the attractive forces, mostly hydrophobic and dispersive, resulting in the least partial unfolding of the protein. Now we talk about the pH induced denaturation. The presence of a specific counter ion binding leads to the formation of compact intermediate state such as the molten globular state that have substantial secondary structure, little or no tertiary structure and relatively complex, compact as compared to the native state and proteins are most stable in the vicinity of their isoelectric point. In general, the electrostatic interaction are believed to contribute to the small amount of the stability in the native state. However, there are maybe some exceptions. Chemical denaturants. Urea, especially usually at 8 molar and guanidinium hydrochloride at 6 molar are currently the best sort for the preferential solvation of the denatured unfolded state which involving predominantly hydrophobic related properties and to a lesser extent hydrogen bonding both side chain and backbone appear to be more soluble in the presence of denaturants these are good solvent because of the hydrophobic component and bad for the hydrophilic ones and vice versa the m value of the both the denaturants reflects the dependence of free energy on the denaturant concentration for the urea it is approximately generally 1 kilocalorie per mole and for the guanidinium hydrochloride it is generally 3 kilocalorie per mole the, you can see here the structure of urea and guanidinium hydrochloride how the chemical denaturation occurs by the urea and guanidinium hydrochloride is shown here you can see here that uh, polypeptide backbone collapse without side chain and side chain reduces backbone collapse however persistent backbone collapse without side chain and side chain prime backbone expansion you can see here as you increase the urea or of course guanidine hydrochloride concentration the here i am showing the example of fluorescence however the absorption and some other techniques can also be used so a dramatic change of the native state and the unfolded state can be observed here you can see here a simple sigmoidal curve is followed by increasing the urea concentration and the value of the cm is considered as a concentration where 50% of the protein is in denatured state and 50% of the protein in the native conformation and it gives the idea about the stability of the protein as the cm value moves towards the lower side means protein is less stable and if the cm value moves towards the higher side it means the protein is more stable here we discuss the thermal denaturation you can see here in the graph that as you increase the temperature the optical properties is increased and this tendency is used to estimate the thermodynamic properties of the protein and you can see how the structural changes or how the conformation of the protein changes as you increase the temperature and how the protein is started unfolding from the lowest lower to the higher temperature so the effect of temperature on the structure can be directly used for the estimation of the Gibbs free energy 
which causes the disruption of hydrogen bonding and increasing hydrophobicity. There is a compromise between the stability and activity in the structure of the active state of the protein. As you increase the temperature, the activity get lost and the structure of course get lost. Here we give some idea about the cold denaturation of the protein. Some protein also denatured as it moves towards the lower temperature. You can see here the protein structure of protein at 25 degrees Celsius as you move down till the minus 11 degree C you can see a dramatic loss in that of the structure protein occurs. The free energy curves starts to drop at lower temperature as predicted by the thermodynamics of the protein folding. And several proteins have been shown to exhibit cold denaturation under destabilizing condition in usually either low pH or moderate denaturate concentrations. Here we discuss about the denaturation of the protein by organic solvent. You can see that the exposure of protein to an organic solvent such as alcohol may also cause the denaturation. The protein molecule twists and flexes through free bond rotation within as the hydrophobic side chain shuns the alcohol. In this process, hydrogen bonds and ionic interaction can be broken. You can see here that the alcohol and it binds to the forms hydrogen bonds and thus breaks the hydrogen bond intramolecular hydrogen bond of the protein and thus causes the denaturation of the protein. Here we discuss the denaturation of protein by detergent. You can see that the detergents has a hydrophobic side chain hydrophobics as well as the hydrophilic side chains. Protein have hydrophobic and hydrophilic side chain and detergent is attracted to these and forces the protein part. The native structure of protein is partially created by hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions. Detergent substitute this cell bonding with the detergent amino acid bonding. Detergent is a salt and breaks up positive and negative interaction and thus unfolds the protein. You can see here in a graph that the before SDS treatment and the after SDS treatment how the structure of protein get disturbed from the native conformation to the random coil conformation. So you can see here as we increase the pH of the solution by adding the hydroxyl ion you can see the charge state of the amino acid especially the main chain and the side chains are changing and as you increase the hydroxyl ion concentration means increase the pH the protonation deprotonation occurs and the charge state converted into the uncharged state and that's what there is a loss of counter ions and that leads to the form loss of Electro weak electrostatic interaction and thus leads to the denaturation of the protein. The denatured state of protein is simply saying that the it involves the most of the residue in fully extended conformation of the peptide. So the that's what it is able to highly expose to the solvent and thus the substitution involves solvents and exposed residue in the native have the limited effect. On the other hand, the denatured state have considerable residual structure, then it is also possible for the mutation and may affect the conformation of the three dimensional structure and the unfolding state. In extreme cases, perhaps only the denatured state and is not in the native state. So you can see here the denatured state is simply the random coil state and it have a large number of conformation. There is no net exact conformation of the protein that's what it is called the unfolded state or the denatured state. Now we can summarize that as you increase the concentration of protein the intensity of color development can be observed and that is simply used to estimate the concentration of protein in an unknown solution. Now you can see here that, that there are several forces non covalent and as well as covalent forces that stabilizes the three dimensional structure of the protein like the ionic bonds hydrophobic interactions disulfide bonds and hydrogen bonds and these forces are involved in the maintaining tertiary structure of the protein and loss of these forces by some means like the increase in temperature pressure ph causes the protein denaturation so 
there are so many reagents used for the denaturation of the protein like guanidinium hydrochloride and urea you can see here the native state is denatured is converted into the denatured state by the urea and guanidinium hydrochloride at extremes of the ph and by increasing the high the temperature which causes the aggregation of the protein so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module we discussed that proteins are synthesized and folded in different conformation and one of which matching with the native conformation is selected and that is known as the native con state of the protein which is energetically most favorable state of the protein and that state is the only functional state of the protein so protein keeps folding in different correct conformation as it is synthesized in a stepwise fashion for the quantification of the protein content it is important and it has many applications in clinical laboratory practices and research especially in the field of biochemistry because if you have any problem any error in the estimation of protein concentration that going on in the all process and ultimately lead to the problems in the outcome of the reaction so that's what it is very essential to correctly estimate the concentration of protein destruction of higher order structure is leads to the loss of activity of the protein and this process is referred as denaturation or unfolding of the protein which occurs mainly because of the loss of all non covalent forces that holds the three dimensional structure of the protein and a small change between the denatured state to the native state which is equivalent to 1 to 15 kilocalorie per mole and that's a equals to the strength of few hydrogen bonds so the protein is having mainly native conformation in the cell it get denatured by extreme of conditions by loss of non-covalent forces and that's process known as the denaturation thank you